Hi, this is Katra, and this is a control stick calibration guide for the FOB GCC. Uh, this guide will assume that you are starting completely from scratch, and I will go over everything that you need to get your FOB calibrated uh, on, all on your computer. Uh, you'll need three downloads. Uh, you'll need Slippy for the adaptive drivers. You'll need Dolphin, the mainline version, in order to run Smash Scope, which is what the tool that I use to calibrate my controllers. Uh, all the links I that you need are in the description, so feel free to go down there and download them. Uh, first things first is make sure that your adapter is plugged in to your computer. Uh, just to be safe, I would use both cables if you're using a OEM Nintendo adapter or any of the other third-party adapters. Uh, a word of warning about third-party adapters, uh, I've only ever used a Mayflash and an Input Integrity lossless adapter, and those I have never had issues with. I've seen a lot on the FOB Discord of people having issues with their FOBs, and it's almost entirely because they use a one of those cheap, generic, third-party adapters that you find on Amazon. So I highly recommend either a Mayflash or if you can get your hands on a lossless adapter. I've also heard that uh, Handheld Legends has a pretty good adapter, but I haven't had the chance to try it yet. So once you have your adapter plugged in, um, make sure that the adapter, if it has a switch with a PC mode and a Wii U mode, make sure it's in the Wii U mode. Uh, completely ignore the PC mode. You should never use that for your adapter. Uh, once it's plugged in and it's in the right mode, go ahead, open up the Slippy Launcher. Uh, go ahead and choose the default settings, except for here. Once you get to here, make sure that you install it with the GameCube adapter drivers. And this is the reason that we use Slippy is because it does it all automatically. All right, once Slippy is all done, you don't need to run it. You can just unclick that, hit finish, and you can move that. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this either. Uh, put that over there. Uh, once the next thing you want to do is open up the Dolphin zip file that you have. Let's move this out to the desktop. And then we can get rid of that too. Go over there, open up Smash Scope, open up Apps, Smash Scope, and then all we need is this boot.doll file. Once we have that, we can go ahead and open up Dolphin. And then you want the dolphin.exe. Hit no to that. And then the first thing you want to do, go to controllers, GameCube adapter for Wii U. And then very important, make sure all of these Wii remotes are set to none. Uh, you won't get any stick input if these aren't select, uh, put to none. And then we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and plug in our controller to port one. Uh, also important, uh, make sure that uh, Smash Cup only reads port one. So make sure that port one is the one that's being used. And then we can go ahead and open up, uh, go to desktop and then open up that boot.doll file. And we should get any second now, Smash Scope. All right. So once that, once you're in Smash Scope, we have your controller. You can hit A for that. It's not working. Oh, uh, it would probably help if my adapter was plugged in. Open up Smash Scope. And here we go. This is Smash Scope. Uh, we're going to want to go into the controller test. You can ignore notch visualization and then the uh, os os oscilloscope. Uh, I think is how you pronounce that. I'm going to cut that out. Uh, but yeah, controller test. And right now, we can't make any changes to the fob uh, because safe mode is on. Anytime you plug in your uh, controller for the first time, it always starts up in safe mode. Uh, so to turn safe mode off, we're going to want to hold A, X, Y and then start and then hold that for a couple seconds. You'll see it lock up and uh, it'll go up to the right and these will be pressed. Uh, that just means that something's been toggled for the fob. Uh, so now we have safe mode on, uh, we can make changes to our fob. 
if you are worried about leaving safe mode on, don't worry. Anytime you unplug your controller and plug it back in, safe mode is automatically turned back on. Now let's start with the gray stick. Uh, to configure the gray stick, you're going to want to do A, Y, X, and then left trigger. And again, your controller will lock up. And now we can calibrate it. If you notice, the C stick is no longer responding. Uh, that's because for this first pass through, we're going to be mimicking the, the C stick the entire time with the gray stick. Um, we actually don't care what the gray stick is doing on screen. Um, we only care about mimicking uh, the physical gray stick with the digital C stick. This is very, very important if you're calibrating a brand new fob because a lot of times the, C, the stick will not at all be accurate with what you're doing. Uh, so you're just going to ignore the gray stick on the screen and only care about the actual physical direction that it's going. So C stick always starts in neutral. So to uh, move to the next step, you can either use the triggers or I like to hit A. It'll now go to the right. So now we once again, uh, with the gray stick, mimic it in person. You don't care about what it is on the screen. We're going to the right on the physical controller. And then once you're in there, you're going to hit A. It'll return to neutral. So you return to neutral, hit A again, up, A, neutral. And you're gonna it's going to continue that for every single diagonal as well as cardinals. So neutral, left, neutral, down, neutral. And once you go to the, uh, to the uh, down notch, we're going to go to start with the diagonals now. So we're going to go up to the right, hit A, back to neutral, top left, neutral, bottom left, neutral and bottom right neutral. So now after that one, uh, this is where you would do Firefox notches, if you have Firefox notches. Uh, for this tutorial, I'll go, I'll skip through them, but uh, it's the exact same as the uh, cardinals as well as the diagonals, but this time you're gonna be using Firefox notches. So if you don't have Firefox notches, you can just hit A and then just don't touch the stick and then just hit A through all of these until you get to this last one right here. Once you get to this one, uh, as soon as you press A, you'll move on to the second pass through. And uh, this one is the measurement phase, or not the measurement phase, the adjustment phase. Uh, hey, Editor Kadra here. So very quickly, after the first pass through, the measurement phase, the stick on the screen, the gray stick, should now be accurate to what the stick is doing. So for this uh, pass through, the adjustment phase, you should be using the gray stick on the screen to help make the fine adjustments of the J melee X and J melee Y values. So the adjustment phase, a little tricky to, to explain, but basically you're going to again mimic what the, the C stick is doing. And you can make slight adjustments to these bottom left values right here uh, by using the X and Y buttons. So uh, typically, the, if you're hitting the Y button, you'll see that the X is decreasing while the Y is increasing. And then with the X button, the X will be increasing while the Y is decreasing. Uh, this changes depending on what uh, uh, area you are on the controller. But essentially, it's it remains the same in that regards. Uh, so for this one, for the top, for the north uh, diagonals, I'm going to be doing 7,000, 7,000. So... Just gonna hit Y, op X until it's 7,000 right there. I'm gonna hit A to move on. I'm gonna go up here. This one's already 7,000, so we can continue. Uh, this is important for melee players. Uh, for shield drops, uh, you're gonna want to be a little bit lower uh, on the Y value. So like there, 7,250 and 6,750. That's usually what I like to calibrate it. And in order to do that, you want to mimic how you would shield drop. So I go from left and then I roll it down to the notch and that's where I would make my adjustments. And like I said, I like 7250, uh, 6750. And then same thing with the right side, uh, all the way to the right and then roll it down, 7250, 6750. All right, and once you do that, you have control of the C stick again, you are done calibrating the left stick. Uh, now to do the right stick, the C stick, you're going to do pretty much the same command, A, Y, X, and then right trigger this time. And now you're going to mimic the left stick with the C stick.
So we're going to start in neutral and you're going to hit A. And then again, you're going to follow the gray stick with the C stick. So go to the right, A, neutral, up, neutral, left, neutral, down, neutral. And by this time, I'm sure you get the idea. All right. And now the same thing with hair. This has like the Firefox notches too, but we can just skip through all these until you get to right here. We are now in the adjustment phase. You, uh, again, we can go to the top left. All right, let's move that to 7,000. And for the C stick, I'll just have 7,000 in all four diagonals. Uh, and if you did Firefox notches for either sticks, you would also have to, you could also adjust them as well. Um, but since we skipped the Firefox notches during the adjustment phase, it also skips the Firefox notches. And make that 7,000. There we go. And as soon as you hit it A for the last time, you are now calibrated. Uh, anytime you calibrate your controller, it'll turn auto initiation uh, initialization off, which is when you unplug your controller and plug it back in. Uh, C stick, the six don't work until you hit B, and now they work just fine. Uh, to turn that back off, you can turn safe mode back off. And the command to turn auto initialization on is A, Y, X, and Z. And now, if I unplug and plug my controller back in, uh, they work right away. And again, commands don't work because as soon as you unplug it, safe mode turns back on as soon as you plug it back in. And... Now you have a fully calibrated uh, working fob. Uh, in the description as well, I have a link to the documentation that goes through all the settings of the fobs. Uh, I highly recommend reading through it if you own a fob. Um, there's a lot of really good settings and a lot of ones that you can you can really fine tune the feeling of your controller with a lot of the analog settings. So in the description, highly recommend highly recommend looking through it. And it also just goes way more in depth and is much better at describing the process than I am. All right, thanks for watching.